We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Prepare yourself. Okay, let's go. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Thank you, everyone, for joining me live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 on this snowy, snowy East Coast day. Come on, 12 to 16 inches. Allentown area, Jersey, New York. It's going to be insane. And thank God my neighbor has a snowblower because the idea of having to shovel all of this right now, you know what? I don't mind tightening up the ass, tightening up the legs. You know, getting some really good workout and sweating, but uh, yeah, 12 to 16 inches. I haven't shoveled that kind of snow in years. So as you all know, we have producer, talent manager, international speaker, and here's the thing. Clients range anywhere and everywhere from Disney, Marvel, Warner Brothers, Sony Universal, Brad Lambert. He has got an extensive, extensive relationship with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And to all of my family and friends and to those that are tuning in who are Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah, we're going to find out if he's got any gems to drop about what he loves most. He is known, okay, get this, Mr. Brad Lambert is known as Mr. Pittsburgh of Hollywood. Brad, welcome to the show. We're live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Thanks so much for having me, man. This is a blast. Mr. Mr. Pittsburgh of Hollywood. I had to write that down. I got that from your Instagram <laughs> story. <laughs> I love it. No, you know, I'm, uh, you can take uh, me out of Pittsburgh, but you can't take the Pittsburgh out of me, right? Now, what's life like now out there in Hollywood from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Oh, man, I, I miss the Berg each and every day. I've got a lot of family and friends there, and obviously uh, the sports uh, town element of it is, is something I miss on a daily basis. So, um, you know, you come out to LA for many things. I came out here specifically to work and chase my passions. So, uh, I moved 3000 miles away from my family, and my friends to not play games. <laughs> How often do you come home? Uh, I'd say two to three times a year, depending on my schedule and Obviously, with uh, the pandemic, I haven't been able to get back in the last year plus, but I'm you know, looking forward to doing that, hopefully later this year, if it allows. Mm. Every, everything going good, back home, uh, family? Yeah, great. Uh, you know, thankfully, everybody's doing okay, and you know, we're just kind of uh, hunkering down and, until it's safe to, to do what we need to do. So as you and I had a nice discussion uh, a couple minutes before coming on live, uh, you know, discussing what's happening in, in a world, in a career, you know, in our career and um, in your career, in the, in the entertainment business and across the board. So what's been keeping you preoccupied right now, Brad? You know, uh, I'm just really trying to focus on what I can control. Um, a lot of us have been impacted by the pandemic, some worse than others, and, and I feel for them and sending my, you know, condolences and well wishes. But, you know, the, the industry, specifically Hollywood and entertainment, have been impacted in such a way that, you know, the movie theaters have been closed for so long, which I can't wait to get back. Give me a, a frozen Coke and a large popcorn and a movie and I'm a happy camper. Um, but for me, you know, I, 
I work a lot with the studios. So since the theaters are shut down, campaigns have changed, budgets have changed, shooting has changed. So, you know, I'm focusing on what I can control at this time. And I recommend a lot of people who are out there listening. There's a lot of stress, a lot of frustrations. But if we can focus on what we can control, we can get a lot done. We'll feel a whole lot better about ourselves and our situations and uh, good things can come from it. So I've been, you know, reverting my efforts to development projects. I have a slate of films, a TV show that I'm working on, uh, a a children's book that I'm writing uh, and just, you know, doing amazing things like this, hopping on a a radio show with you, podcasts, interviews. I had a a full one pager today drop in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, which I'm just beyond grateful for. So it's uh there's still a lot to be done. There's still a lot we can do during this unique time. And uh, I just hope the best for everybody. Share with us a little bit within that newspaper article, which is one of the top, top publications uh, in Pittsburgh. What brought that about? Man, you know, uh, a lot of stuff just is added up over time, you know, from when I lived in Pittsburgh and then when I lived in North Carolina and then obviously coming out here and doing what I'm doing. Uh, Most recently, I I was a part of a surprise for Cam Hayward, who is the defensive tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, pro bowler, one of the best guys on and off the field. And uh, he's a big Marvel fan like myself. So we we bonded relatively quickly after Ryan Shazier's wedding. And we've been friends ever since. And, you know, I found out he loved Downey and I was able to connect Cam to to Downey's team and to Downey directly. And Downey surprised him with a a video wearing his jersey saying hello. And then he actually sent Cam a uh, the Infinity Gauntlet or should I say the Stark Gauntlet and signed it for him. So it was just a really cool, you know project to do during the pandemic and to, to work with Downey and his team again on a just a fun project to bring some happiness to somebody and and that was the most recent thing that was in November um, when that all went down Cam posted the video Downey posted it was like a the the best collaboration and partnership ever because I was able to take my passion for the Steelers and my passion for Marvel and and combine the two um, so it that kind of got a lot of attention in, in the press circuits, as, as I'm sure you're aware. And I was able to get connected to uh, Joshua Axelrod over at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, incredible guy, great writer. And uh, he was nice enough to, to reach out with this opportunity to do a full write-up. And uh, like I said, being from Pittsburgh is really special to me, and I hold that near and dear. And uh, to be recognized by the city is something that I won't forget. Pittsburgh is a great city. It's got a great reputation. Uh, All of us here on the East Coast in a tri-state area and beyond, we all know your city and the reputation it has. What was said about you, it says, meet Brad Lambert, a Hollywood talent manager who makes dreams come true. Can you take us a little bit deeper into what that means of what you do for your clients and the people that you've worked with and that you're going to continue to work with? Yeah, man. I mean, it, it starts from just how I was raised. You know, if you have the opportunity to do something nice for somebody else, you do it. You don't worry about what you're going to get back in return. This isn't a transaction, right? I'm not saying, hey, I'm only going to do this for you if you do this for me. Like, if you want to give something back in return, great. But that's not going to stop me from adding value or bringing happiness to your life. So, you know, from a very young age, that was instilled, you know, to me. Uh, my mom is such a huge part of my life and um, I've just kind of grown. And, and as you build and you grow and you grow up and you evolve from as a person into, you know, even your career path, you, you know, there are levels to this business, as I'm sure you're aware. And uh, for me, the, the bigger I get in regards to my brand and, and the companies and, you know, celebrities and just my network, if you will, it allows me to do more for people. And, you know, once again, if I can connect the dots or help someone from the littlest thing, like a compliment or open the door for somebody, I'm going to do that. And then on a larger scale, you know, hooking Willie Parker up with Michael Jordan or surprising a three time cancer survivor with, you know, tickets to the Spider-Man Far From Home premiere. um, We all have the ability to make an impact 
and make a difference in this world. The difference is if we care enough to do so. And that's the big if. If we care enough to do so, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not big enough. Da, 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 da. And I forget who said it, but it, the, the quote something like, you know, if you don't think you're big enough, be trapped in a room with a mosquito. I haven't heard that one before. That's interesting. Because we all know mosquitoes are tiny and they leave their mark. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's uh, size of your brand of who you are and whatever it, it doesn't matter like just put the time and effort in you know when i hooked you know two-time super bowl champion willie parker the pittsburgh steelers up with michael jordan i didn't know michael jordan i wasn't who i am today with my brand and my network and the relationships that i have but i put the time and effort into it because i knew it would bring much needed happiness to him and i got it done so you know, I, I don't want to hear excuses from people that say, oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. I did that when I was like a senior in high school or a freshman in college. You know what I mean? Like there, there's there's no excuse. You know, if, if, if you want it bad enough, you'll find ways to make it happen. And I think if each and every one of us took the time and effort into bettering other people's lives instead of competing or tearing others down for your own personal gain, I think the world would be a much better, brighter place. And that's what I'm trying to do, especially in Hollywood, which we all know is a very negative, cutthroat, nasty business. And on the flip side, it's also the most creative and colorful and incredible industry to be in. So it shouldn't be two sides to that coin where it's just so positive on one end and on the other end, it's awful. So I'm, I'm doing whatever I can to kind of be a beacon of light and positivity to try to change the culture within Hollywood uh, to make it more inclusive and diverse and just a, a win together mentality because so many people are out here only concerned about themselves. And it's, it's so sad. It's so sad. I'm going to read a little piece here. I'm a guy who loves doing surprises for others, Mr. Lambert said. If there's an opportunity to do something really special, I'm going to do it. I get so much out of it. That's the beautiful thing about kindness. It's contagious. Yep. It's true. It is. It's scientifically proven that kindness is contagious, whether you do it yourself whether you're the person that's impacted by an act of kindness or you're on the outside looking in and witnessing an act of kindness. It's scientifically proven that kindness is contagious and it will increase your happiness, your, your emotions, and just drive you into wanting to experience that and pass it forward. So once again, that's what I'm trying to do with the things that I've done is, is just continue to put this good energy and good vibes and positivity out there because it does impact people. The messages and DMs and texts that I get from people, people who I don't even know from all over the world who may not even speak English. Um, I, I have to translate some of these messages, but they're just so incredible of how I'm able to impact them with, with not a huge following. I only have like, I think 25,000 on Instagram, but it's just the point of like, you don't have to have 6 million followers to, to make a difference, you know? that's an added bonus because it increases your reach. Um, I'm desperately trying to continue to build my brand because the bigger I get, the more I'll be able to do. And uh, in this business, specifically Hollywood, you're, you're in a situation where your brand limits you in many ways um, if it's not big enough. So I'm constantly trying to evolve and grow and, and impact and in the meantime, build my personal brand so I can continue to, to do more and help others and, do whatever I can to make the world a better place. Another piece I would like to read from one of the top uh, publications out of Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Setting up a meeting between then Steelers running back Willie Parker and his idol NBA legend Michael Jordan in 2008 when Mr. Parker was at his lowest point after suffering a gruesome leg injury. It then continues to say, he puts other people first, Mr. Parker said of Mr. Lambert. If he reaches out to you, he doesn't have any ulterior motives. He brings you into his inner circle. 
He's a genuinely great guy. That's a beautiful piece. Yeah, I love Willie, man. Uh, I've known him for, I think, over 15 years now, which is crazy because when I met him, I was probably 16, 17 years old. And now I'm 32 and he's, uh, I think, six to seven years older than me. So we're totally different, you know, uh, parts of our lives. And, and just to maintain that relationship long after he's hung up his cleats, um, which in sports, for the most part, you know, once players are done, fans generally have moved on to the next new shiny object right but for me you know when when i created a relationship with willie he actually left the steelers before retiring and went to the redskins for a year and you know i still maintain that relationship because when i say i'm going to have a relationship with you i do everything in my power to to hold up my end of the bargain today i read a quote and you were the first and only person that came to my mind and I believe I've read quotes before, maybe one other time, but this is something I believe is worth hearing or for me to read to you because this reminded me of you. So this quote came up on uh, Instagram and it says, you attract what you are. What if you are a con- what if you are kind and you attract mean? What if you are honest and you attract liars? What if you are loyal and you attract cheaters? What if you are God conscious and you attract someone whose heart is hardening with disbelief? No, you don't always attract what you are. You attract people who are in desperate need of what you are. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? I love it. And and the one thing I'll say to that is if you are being kind and people take advantage of you, don't change who you are, change who you surround yourself with. Right. So that's the big difference. A lot of people will feel gated or slighted because someone took advantage of them or treated them poorly. But all you have to do is like, look, I'm not going to change who I am. I'm still going to be that kind, giving person. But that person who I surrounded myself with will no longer be a part of my circle. Um, And a lot of people don't think that way. They just give up on being kind and generous and loving. And they're jaded because of that. And they just stop instead of changing their surroundings. Do you find, Brad, that your circle is more solid now or has it always been that way because you've been so conscious of who and what to keep in your life? Uh, I mean, I, I think I had a good understanding early on, but as I've gotten older and more mature and just experience, you know, insane highs and horrible lows, you grow and you evolve and uh, you, you're taught valuable lessons, good or bad. So for me, you know, I, I constantly want to surround myself with people who I admire and who inspire me. It could be because you're a good person. It could be because you're insanely smart. It could be because you're an insane artist. It could be because you're just talented. Like th- there's no ulterior motives. I just, I'm inspired by people who are doing incredible things. Um, you could work at the grocery store down the street, but if you glow with, with happiness and kindness and you just put out positive energy, I want to know you. Like I want to be in your, your circle. That's the kind of person I want to surround myself with. So I've always tried to do that and surround myself with people who I admire and who inspire me. And that's allowed me to, to know some just incredible humans. Like I'm so grateful for the people in my life and, you know, some range from, you know, everyday people and others are the biggest stars in the world. And uh, that's just the, the class and their job that they have, but that doesn't define who they are. Um, so I'm, I'm just grateful by that. And I, I continue to be very cognizant of who I surround myself with. If there's someone who is bringing a lot of negativity or, you know, just, uh, bad attitude, I, I definitely step away because I, I have, life is hard enough and I don't need that kind of energy in my life. You're an international speaker. You do speaking and, and coaching, and uh, you remind me of me. I see that you work, uh, especially with the testimonials, with the younger generation. What yep. have you been doing while continuing to be that uh, that influence, that inspiration that people are seeking? Are you doing it online? Are you doing it by phone? Yeah, man. I mean, we, we live in a time where we have FaceTime, Zoom calls, texts, emails. I mean, there, there are so many different ways to communicate in today's world. And, and I'm grateful for that because 
I literally, you know, a few days ago, I connected with the an artist, really talented artist. Uh, she goes by Dixie Arts on Instagram. Um, connected with her about a year ago, and uh, she's in Sweden. And uh, I talked to her a few days ago because she's the one that is doing the illustration for the children's book that I'm working on. Um, just an incredible artist, but we hop on WhatsApp and we talk. Uh, she's in Sweden. I'm in L.A., and it's just about winning together. You know, I, I can't speak highly enough of her talents and her abilities as an artist. Um, I'm bringing hopefully a powerful message to the children's book. Uh, the focus is on teaching young kids the value of kindness um, and showing actionable ways to do it. Uh, very basic ways to do it. Um, so I'm excited to to kind of create uh, I plans for a, a series of books. Uh, but the first one is going to be on kindness. And uh, I'm very excited about it. And, you know, having that ability to connect with a talented individual like her all the way in Sweden, it's amazing. Um, I also talk to people in Spain and London and, you know, Australia and, you know, Brazil. It's it's crazy. I, I pinch myself all the time because, you know, of course, I had aspirations to do stuff like this. But at this point in my career to to be having these conversations and having to wake up at just odd times to have phone calls because I'm talking with people halfway around the globe. It's, it's just highly motivating and I just want to do more of it. So um, as far as the coaching goes and just communication in general, that's what I'm trying to do. I, I take every opportunity I can to respond to DMS and messages and hop on calls when needed. And if I see someone in need, you know, whether they're crying out for help, you know, in a way on Twitter or whatever, I, I reach out to people, you know, because sometimes that one phone call or that one message of assurance or I, I believe in you and I support you. Sometimes that's all people need to hear. And, you know, it's so basic, but people just once again, you either care enough to do it or you're not thinking of anyone other than yourself. So, I, you know, let's take those blinders off and, and try to be there for each other because that's really all we got. How detailed will this children's book be, Brad? And what do I mean uh, by that question? Is it illustrated? What would be the what would be the visuals that we would have to look forward to when it comes to this book? Oh man, uh, uh, when you look up this artist, she is an incredible artist with um, cartoons, uh, very. Uh, animated cartoons of the likes of a Disney or Pixar look and feel. Um, so the, the book itself is, is actually going to be focusing on my dog champ. Um, he's a boxer and he's my everything uh, is my child. And he's going to be teaching the kids kindness. And uh, he's going to do that by going around a, a park and teaching his friends who are also animals um, acts of kindness. And it's going to be very digestible, very simple. I want it to be simple because if it's complicated, it won't connect, right? So I'm trying to connect with that young generation, the, you know, Dr. Seuss generation of books where it's very simple, very easy to read. But the emotion that this artist, Vixie Arts, is able to convey through her art is just so incredible. Um, I can't, I can't speak highly enough about her and her abilities. So, um, you know, when you look at the art, you're just like, wow, I feel that emotion from that person or animal that she's drawn. And that's what I want. When you see someone happy in the book, you'll see it. When you see someone sad, you'll see that. Um, because that, that, those emotions are so important, especially at a young age to understand that sad's not good and we have to do something about it. If you see someone sad, you have to fix it. You have to bring them happiness. And oh, someone's happy. This is great. We need more of this. So it, it's very basic, snackable um, lessons in kindness. And then the, the, the plan is for the series, if it's, if it's done well and it, it does well, um, is to have each book kind of touch on those core values that are so important, whether it's teamwork, gratitude, honesty, things like that, that I want to kind of tell that story through these, once again, Disney, Pixar-esque um, creative animals that you just love, you think they're adorable, and, and you want to see more of. Um, I, I've been talking to my, my, my team, and I'm like, look, the art is probably the hardest part of this thing. 
um, because if your art's bad in a book like this, you're not going to do well. Well, let me say, I, I, I've been blessed to have that aspect of the book covered because she's going to blow the doors off of it. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your boxer's name? Champ. Champ. It is Champ. Okay, because I have a post here from back on April 5th of this year. Happy yep. birthday to my boy. So incredibly grateful for seven amazing years and hopefully many more to come. And it does say man's best friend is an accurate description. Love you champ. And I wasn't yep. too sure if that was his name or you were just like, it, like if it was like a sports thing or something. Love you champ. Well, it, well, it's funny you say that it is. I mean, I, I named him after the city of champions, AKA Pittsburgh. So ah. he, his, his name is champ. And that is where the inspiration for it came from. So, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a, a love thing for me to, to extend his legacy and, and keep him going and also pay respects to other animals that have been in my life as well as other friends. And, you know, some have passed on and it's a, it's a cool way to just, you know, show my love and appreciation for the people closest to me. Speaking of love and appreciation, I would like to pull up one of these testimonials. My energy is very drawn to Jake Sadler, North Carolina, uh, yeah. State University. <laughs> Let's pull that up. I want to hear this testimony. Let's see. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm 21, and I'm a senior at NC State University. As long as we. So when Brad came to state my freshman year, he talked about. Uh oh! I hope we're not going to have buffer. About the issues. importance of building genuine relationships. Um, he also spoke on how you should add value to others in any way possible and i just thought these were such important topics brad is a really cool guy um excuse us folks buffering issues he's been a huge inspiration to me and honestly i don't think i've had a conversation with him yet where i haven't learned anything new i can confidently say that brad's advice has changed my life for the better i've applied it in almost every aspect in what i do and i can't be thankful enough for that he is all about spreading kindness and I just think that's the coolest thing in the world. Love that. Love that. That's from Jake. Sanders. Shout out to Jake. <laughs> mm -hmm. shout, out, shout out to my boy, Jake. And, and it's just, you know, I, I literally, when I spoke at NC state a few years back, that was just awesome because that's my alma mater. So I got to come back and, and speak in front of like a hundred to 200 kids. And it was just awesome. It was uh, just a great experience. And I, I stayed afterwards and talked to, every single person who wanted to speak one-on-one. -on -one. So I was there for, I think, almost two hours after um, my time because these incredible young professionals wanted to just say hello and, you know, who am I to deny them that? So I'm just grateful for that. And then, you know, most recently I spoke in Brazil uh, in December of 2019. And that was just a, another life-changing experience that I'm it just grateful for it because, you know, to, to be up on stage speaking in front of the top industry, you know, entertainment industry professionals in South America. And then, you know, I had a translator in my year translating, you know, Portuguese to English and vice versa. And that was just, a <laughs> that was just an experience in and of itself because of the delay. Um, but, you know, life's all about experiences and I'm constantly trying to put my feet to the fire and, and challenge myself and try new things because, you know, I, I want to get this point across, Stephen, is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I, I want to be a doctor, but I'm not. And I'm like, do you have you practiced medicine? And they're like, no. And I was like, well, practice medicine, then you'll be a doctor. You know, oh, I, I, I love football. I want to be a football player. Are you playing football? No. We'll play football. Then you'll be a football player. You aren't blank until you are right. I'm not a producer until I produce a film, produce a film done producer i'm not a writer until i write a book write a book boom done writer we are so in our heads about things that we want to accomplish that it's so black and white it really is mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's going to happen overnight but if you want to do something well obviously within reality as much as i want to jump off the building and fly as cool as that would be to to channel my inner tony stark it's not going to happen you know it's not unless i go you know join the military and and fly jets but my point is within reality 
you can achieve what you want if you put the time and effort into it. You know, I'm not an author yet. When I publish this book, guess what, Stephen? I'm an author. And that is how I want people to chase their dreams and their passions because it's that simple. If you want something, go do it. And, you know, in, in some cases, I want to be a professional athlete, but I'm not talented enough to be a professional athlete. Okay, fine. But you can still work in professional sports in the front office as a trainer, as a coach, and still get that high of being around professional sports. Molly Blanco, she wrote, yes, hands up with the heart. Kindness is contagious. Thank you, Molly, for the comment. Thanks, Molly. Pass it on. Pass it. Yep. Yeah, she heard you. <laughs> I uh, want to thank everyone. Uh, we're going to continue a little bit more with the show. I just want to do a quick uh, update plug in. We've got Brad Lambert. He's an experienced producer, talent manager, international speaker, and marketing professional who's demonstrated history of working in the entertainment industry for film studios, brands, celebrities, production companies, and creative agencies with one of the most beautiful written uh, uh, publishing uh, remarks and statement and references made by the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, one of the top um, media uh, companies out of Pittsburgh, by referencing him as Mr. Pittsburgh of Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you know, Stephen, I, I really want I love I love Pittsburgh. I, I can't say that enough. My goal is to be able to be by coastal in a way where I can be out here, go back to Pitt, be involved in the sports scene as well as the entertainment scene. Um, I want to bring film and TV projects back to the Steel City. That's what I'm actively working on right now. I have a film slate, a bunch of which that I'd love to bring bring it back to Pittsburgh, um, bring jobs to Pittsburgh for people who want to be in entertainment there, uh, obviously generate some revenue and buzz. And I want to make Pittsburgh basically the Atlanta, you know, very much like in Atlanta where it's, it's, you know, everything's filming in Atlanta right now because it's such an entertainment hub now, whereas Pittsburgh is slowly getting that, that uh, credit because it's a beautiful city. You can go 15 minutes in any direction and it's a totally different location. It looks like you're in a different country. Um, so it, it's very versatile in that regard. And it's just a great town with great people. So I'm actively trying to bring projects back there regularly and, uh, you know, make a mark on that industry over there. You being you in the greatness of who you are, Mr. Brad Lambert, the visual that I got in my head from you sharing that is you will become and you're working towards becoming the Tyler Perry of Pittsburgh. Hey, you know what? That's a phenomenal compliment, and I will take it. <laughs> it's what I got. It's what I see. When you said that, I'm like, all right, he's going to become the Tyler Perry of Pittsburgh. But Brad Sh Lambert. Shout out to Tyler Perry. Shout you know, out. no, absolutely. <laughs> I'll take that every day. What would be the most rewarding? Um, you did ex uh, share with us uh, quite a few rewarding experiences, but what rewarding experience? on top of becoming the Tyler Perry of Pittsburgh, when do you believe that you will be able to accomplish that, to have that fulfillment, that, you know, that, that sense of like, wow, I really brought something of a identity, almost like the, the Rocky statue that, that people think of <laughs> in Philadelphia. When do you think you're going to have that? I mean, I, I think you need to appreciate every win that you get. And take time to acknowledge it and give yourself a pat on the back. You know, I, I've been grateful and lucky enough to, to do a lot of things in and around the city of Pittsburgh with the different sports teams and athletes and organizations. You know, one of the greatest compliments I got, quick sidebar, I was at Steelers training camp years ago. And I was uh, eating with the with the team, and the players, and I got up to take my, my trash to the trash bin. And next to me was Dan Rooney. Um, one of the most iconic humans, um, period. And uh, for those who don't know, he, owner of the Steelers, him and his family, the Roonies are very historic in that regard and very respected around the world. And uh, Mr. Rooney was behind me and, and I helped him with his trash and I picked up some tra trash off the ground and threw it away. And he looked at me and he said, you are a good man. And 
I mean, I, I don't know what else I could possibly ask for, but that was coming directly from the man himself. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of person, you know, I aspire to be and, and the, the respect that I hope to have one day. And it's all about impact. And, and that family is all about empathy and kindness and paying it forward. And, you know, anyone who plays for the Steelers feels that it's a family. And, uh, you know, so in, in regards to your question, I, I want to just continue to build you know, each, each step of the way. So for me, it would be to get that first film or TV project at Pittsburgh and then just continue to build, um, the bigger my brand and, and my reach is, I'm going to be able to do more. So I'm just continuing to focus on that so I can continue to do more. Um, you know, I, I'm never going to lose my grasp of being a, in and around the teams there. Um, and I just try to help those guys any way I can, you know, uh, when Eric Ebron came from, you know, the Colts to the Steelers in the off season, I reached out to him immediately and was like, Hey man, welcome to the family. If you need anything, let me know. Mm. And first thing he said was, wow, thank you, man. He's like, uh, I need a house. And he was like joking. And I'm not a realtor, Steven, but I was like, let me see what I can do. And I made some calls and I helped get him his house in Pittsburgh. So, you know, it doesn't matter what the ask is. I'm going to do whatever I can to help. You know, and if ultimately it, it doesn't work out and I'm not able to help, I'm going to find someone who can. I would like to add an addition to that because this prompted me. I would like to bring this up. Uh, so you just had back in July 20th, and you, you touched on this topic before, but I would like to retouch back on it again by ABC 11. Three-time cancer survivor gets the surprise of a lifetime. I want to go ahead. I feel that this is very important. I'll be honest. I didn't watch it. I'm going to watch this and listen to it for the first time with you, Brad. Let's go ahead and pull this up. It states and says here, incredible piece by ABC 11. Thank you for telling the story about an even more incredible kid. Grateful to have been a part of this and to add wherever you are, Brad, let me know. I will be there. I will bring my cameras and I will make sure I help to get footage and everything else. <laughs> That's part of media and PR. And I'm going to tell you, I really would love to get some Great moments because you really inspire Thanks, me. And like I said, Brad is my neighbor. He's not my neighbor right now, but by heart and by spirit, he's from Pennsylvania. I'm from Jersey. Even though he's in California right now, I'm back in Jersey. East Coast. East Coast, baby. And yep. there's a common ground when you think of the tri-state area. You've got Connecticut, New York, PA, and Jersey. And out of all four states, the only two that still somehow has a cohesive balance in relationship is New Jersey's New Jerseyans and Pennsylvanians. New York and Connecticut, completely separate and different. So when you're here, we're really the only two states that kind of mesh together better than the other two. 100%. 100%. Let's go ahead and play this segment. Hospital patient and three-time cancer survivor get one heck of a surprise. NC State grad Brad Lambert orchestrated an incredibly special experience. Getting through three bouts of leukemia requires superhuman strength. Mateo Coca obviously has that. Whether it was an experimental drug or potentially fatal virus, Mateo overcame it all. I literally felt my body fading away from me, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me. During 10 years of cancer treatments, Mateo was drawn to Spider-Man. In the film, Spider-Venom gives character Peter Parker power. Mateo related that to cancer. I just saw this kid who who was just like me, he, he, he wasn't incredibly strong at first. You know, when I had cancer, it obviously was a tremendous burden for me, but I knew that, you know, I can make the, the best out of this dark moment. Inspired to pursue a career in film, Mateo connected with Brad, who helped find Mateo, an internship with a production crew. Once Mateo was in LA, Brad wanted to do more. So I just kind of started thinking when I was already in there working on that campaign, I got the idea to, to take him to the Spider-Man Far From Home world premiere in L.A. Brad produced a video for the big reveal. Expecting never-before-seen footage, Mateo instead 
got the surprise of a lifetime. We're going to the premiere right now. Let's go. <laughs> what? What? And I, I honestly could not believe what was happening. I didn't just want to text him and say, hey, you're going, you know, mm -hmm. as I'm sure he would have been excited with that. But okay. me on that front, I'm, I'm very extra and I want it to be super special. Brad's surprise hit the mark. Together, they enjoyed an unforgettable night at the Chinese theater in Hollywood. Yeah, I always dreamed of, you know, going to a Hollywood premiere, but to go to a, a premiere for my favorite superhero, that was really special. Mateo has been cancer free for the last 12 years. He just graduated from Belmont University and is working on a documentary while pursuing a career as a film director. Joe Mazur, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. How do you feel hearing that again? That was a special moment, man. I mean, uh, I got connected to him through someone who was in the crowd at my NC State speaking engagement. And, uh, you know, I'm up on stage talking about if you do something nice for somebody else, do it. And then here was a girl in the crowd who did just that for her friend. You know, mm -hmm. she reached out to me and was like, hey, I think my friend would get a lot out of meeting you. Uh, he loves the same stuff, you know, comics, Marvel, et cetera. He wants to be a director. I think he would learn a lot from you. Would you talk to him? And I, of course, was like, absolutely. You know, I hopped on a three hour call with him because his story is just fascinating. And after I got off the call and I realized how important Spider-Man was to him, I knew there was something I could do and there was something I had to try to do. Um, and funny enough, uh, what that video didn't say is I actually was able to get him an internship with Robert Downey Jr. Um, so he, that was his next step. He needed to graduate was an internship. So I reached out to Downey's team and uh, got him in the door and he did the rest and got the internship. And he actually moved to LA for the summer and interned with Robert Downey Jr. and his team, which I worked with them. So that was full circle and an awesome, um, just feeling to kind of pay that back and um because he was in la it allowed me to do the spider-man thing which was surprise him and take him to the world premiere of spider-man far from home wow i didn't take a moment um it's what what i'm processing still and from that is this young guy this kid, uh, cancer-free, battled it three times. And I, I really would like everyone who's tuning in to go to Brad R. Lambert to his Instagram page because um, there's just so much great content there. Watch this video. Go to Brad R. Lambert on Instagram and watch the video that was recently posted. You can't miss it. Uh, his reaction to watch that and, and to hear it, even though our listeners weren't able to uh, see it, um, is really profound because when I watched his reaction and the video that he was watching of you, he, he looks like a, a, a young guy that is not letting what happened to him hold him back. I mean, to watch it, it's like it doesn't even exist in his life. Yeah, absolutely. And that was the cool thing about it is, you know, he suffered battles with cancer three times in the first 10 years of his life. You know, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. And that was, as a kid, he did not have a, a childhood. You know, it was always in the hospital and always fighting for his life. So, you know, yeah, it happened, whatever, 12 years ago or whatnot, but that doesn't make it any less impactful, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, it was like I wanted to try to make up for the happiness and the excitement that he lost in those 10 years. And, uh, you know, it was just me calling my relationships over at Sony and, you know, hey, can I bring a three-time cancer survivor who's a huge Spider-Man fan as my plus one? And needless to say, they didn't hesitate because um, – they saw the good in that and they wanted to, you know, bring some happiness to someone who deserved it. And right now I'm actively producing an unscripted show that is about identifying people who need happiness and bringing them happiness. Um, I'm shipping that right now and, and taking that to studios and networks and trying to find it a home. Um, 
we need some kindness and happiness in the world today. And, you know, once again, we can all do it if we care enough to do so. Um, you don't have to be a celebrity. You don't have to be a millionaire. You just have to be someone who cares enough to put the time and effort into doing it. And that's, trust me, you guys are well beyond what you think you can do. Absolutely. And keep me posted on that. And I definitely would like to uh, stay connected in many ways with you. Um, and especially about that project. Now I would like to read um, one last piece from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. His general goal as he continues to further his career is just to provide value anywhere he's needed, whether that takes the form of progressing his own professional ambitions, helping an NFL star in need of giving someone less fortunate a night to remember. And it continues by saying, if you, and I believe this is what you are saying right here, Brad, if you can provide value, identify ways that you can make people's lives and businesses better, you'll, you'll get opportunities. He said, and if you can do that constantly or consistently, I'm sorry, your phone will always ring. Yep. Pay it forward. That's it. Before it's we, that simple. Before we close, Brad, any golden gems you would like to drop? I know we covered your book, uh, your non-scripted show, um, everything else up to date. You're going to soon be the Ty Tyler Perry of Pittsburgh. <laughs> You're I missing the 12 to 16 inches of snow that's happening out here. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I am. So go ahead, please. I would just say, you know, I, I know a lot of people are, are struggling right now with, with the, the pandemic and everything that's come from that. And I would just say, you know, keep going, keep fighting, keep moving forward, control what you can. And it's as simple as getting out of bed in the morning, take care of yourself, calling your loved ones, uh, sitting down at the computer and writing that book you've always wanted to write or, you know, working on that fitness goal that you wanted to do. There's a lot of time that on our hands right now, time that I don't think any of us prepared for. So there are opportunities out there for us to, to grow in certain areas. There are areas that we're kind of stuck and we can't grow in right now, but there's plenty of ways that we can grow and get better. And my goal when this thing started was to come out the other end better in certain aspects than when I started. And that's what I'm trying to actively do. So that's focusing on what I can control and adding whatever value I can and helping whoever I can in the process. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about what we choose to leave behind for future generations. Mm -hmm. Any uh, shout outs you want to give right now, Brad? Uh, just shout out to my friends and my family. Shout out to Pittsburgh. Love you guys. And uh, just be kind and pass it on. That's it. We all need that now more than ever. Uh, not only can we find Brad at Brad R. Lambert on Instagram, and we've got bradrlambert.com. Where else would you like to add? Where would, where would you like to be contacting people to know more about you and stay connected? Uh, I would say Instagram is my, my top platform. I'm on it the most and I put a lot of time and effort into that. So you can hit me up on Instagram, shoot me a DM, email me. Um, and, uh, yeah, follow the journey, <laughs> follow the journey. And, uh, I want to thank you for this. Really want to thank no, you. Thank for you, this. Steven. I appreciate you reaching out, man. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. Stay, uh, hold the line real quick, Brad. We're going to close. Thank you, everyone, for joining Mr. Brad Lambert, producer, international speaker. Uh, he is someone really, really worth knowing. Uh, his accolades are beyond impeccable and surprising for someone who is so generous, so humble, so loving, so kind. And it was really written so very well. And honestly, just recently from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, he is known as Mr. Pittsburgh of Hollywood, but not Hollywood in a way. Yeah, not Hollywood in a way you think. I mean, real Hollywood, East Coast style. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Amen, baby. Um, 
Some of the clients that Brad has worked with include Disney, Marvel, Warner Brothers, Sony, Universal, and most importantly, the heart of his home city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's been featured on Fox, CBS, ABC, NBC, and now Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Brad, thank you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you to all who's listening. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to uh, create an article. Uh, this episode will air 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this coming Tuesday. I probably will end up putting it at a 2 p.m. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Have my, <laughs> have my assistant. We're going to do 8 a.m. I like to write it down, but I know Christina is probably listening or most likely listening. Let's do 8 a.m., 2 p.m. Get that on. We're going to do Tuesday live on air with Stephen Cook on Power 98.5. Power 98.5 is available on the iOS Android app. Um, I hope I'm probably going to have to unplug her because she's going to start talking, but Alexa, I don't know, there she goes. Um, Streamitter.com. Streama, uh, Radio Line, MyTuner, and we have just been invited and launched playing 24 (laughs) 7 on radio.com, one of the largest, largest platforms for radio. And you can find uh, CBS, NBC, CNBC, I believe MSNBC are all over there. So yes, we are on radio.com, but always start at home first on the iOS Android app, Alexa, and you can go to www.power985.com. Oh, wherever you are, be lucky you're not going to have to shovel this 12 to 16 inches <laughs> of snow. Oh, God. It'll be all right. I'm going to be using a snowblower. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.